So you want to know how to turn this into this. Most 3D artists ask the same question. How can I turn the default cube in Blender into a beautiful environment or animation? So that's what we're going to go over today. So Blender has a very unique and wonderful tool called the annotation tool. I love using this in the starting and the beginning process of creating an environment. Right here you can see I path out the road and then I start to build out a layout. So that box in the middle of the road is going to be a bridge or an overpass where the camera animation is going to go under the bridge through to the other side. Um, and then I do some extra planning. So I want some houses. So we're going to populate this street with houses all along the two sides. And we're going to have a left hand bend on the end of this road because if you just have a straight road, it's going to make your scene look like it goes on forever, depending on what you do in the background. Um, so you want this left hand turn to get rid of more things you have to build. So here I go into building our background and it's just really a plan. So there's going to be tiers of depth. That's where you can see here. It seems like I have three layers and each one is going to be higher than the one in front of it. This way, when you're doing the camera animation, you'll be able to see your foreground and your background. So it doesn't appear like your scene goes on forever, but has a definitive end. So once you finish doing your annotation and you draw out the plan for what your city or whatever is going to be, then you move modeling process, which I just call a block out because all you're doing is blocking out the environment. You're not doing anything special. You're not detailing anything. You're just going to go one step at a time, block out your environment, and this way you can see what it's going to look like when you have it filled in. So I'm starting with the road here. You can see I'm shaping it out, getting the path the way I want it to be. Um, nothing complicated, but you want to get your shape correct. You want to get your location right. This way, when you go to put in your final objects, you don't have this problem of things looking wrong or not proportionate or anything like that. So once I get the road in, then I just bring in a simple cube, nothing complicated. Um, I throw a loop cut down the center of it using control R and I'm going to lift up this loop cut on the top. Just, and this, this is what's going to represent houses. Very simple, nothing complicated. And I'm not like doing a lot of detail. But if I do have any special buildings, for instance, like this bridge I'm working on now or this overpass, obviously I'm going to create a little bit different of a block out so that I can see that this is a different part of the environment and this will be a bridge and not a house, obviously. So you want to take your time, get whatever buildings you're going to have, maybe roads, fountains, things like that. Just block them out real simple. Here, I'm playing around with the idea of a staircase. I end up scratching this idea in the end um, just because it didn't play out well with the animation or the environment. You're going to run into things like that all the time where you're going to try things out. They're not going to work or they will work. That's why this process is very important because in this process of blocking out and uh, annotating and building a template, it's okay if something isn't permanent because it takes only 30 seconds to finish and to fix. Um, that's why you see me use very basic things like a cube with a loop cut. Um, the bridge is literally three cubes. This allows you to plan everything out very easily. So here you see me go into the background, uh, a very, very important and crucial part of your environment. If your background uh, doesn't fit in, it, it'll look out of place. So specifically with my style, I do mostly anime, NPR, stylized kind of environments in Blender. What I've found is very important is having a very solid background. So the background for me is how I can, you know, perceive depth correctly. So I always build a background and this is going to be a lot less detailed than the foreground because you want be perceived as far off in the distance or not as close. You don't want it to blend in with your foreground. So you can see here, I'm kind of building out this uh, building blocks of like a hill or walls. Um, and you'll see, I do a lot of looking from where I think the camera perspective will be, which is right behind the bridge, right where these two houses are. And I look a lot from this focal point because I want to make sure that the background 
blends well and works with it. Then you see here, I think in a simple cube, which is gonna represent a tower, just very simple. A thinner and taller cube it represents a tower in my situation. Now, you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be really good at drawing or even 3D modeling at this point because you're just planning everything out. As you can see, my annotation marks are pretty much scribbles. It's just some boxes and some lines. It's not fancy. It's not, not something that is overly complicated. A, a beginner can literally do this. You know, with this, this uh, block out specifically for me took um, about 40 minutes. And this was going from very little. I had a few references that I used from Google and I just kind of made my own unique scene out of this. So now I play with the idea of elevation. Since we have background where it's higher up, I wanted the road to be leading up to it as if this road goes up to the mountain or the walls that are in the background. You also see me planning um, right here on the other side of the bridge. Now this isn't necessary because it won't be visible from the camera perspective, but in case I was planning on possibly doing a second or third animation with this scene, so I was planning ahead. Um, this is not something that'll be used in the animation I'm doing now, but in the future it may. So I go back to the background and I start to plan out what I'm gonna do back here. What's, what's gonna be a focal point? And so I start to plan out a castle, which is those two circles are gonna be, you know, a, you know, a tower with a gate. And then I'm gonna have some kind of building with another tower, a wall, and a couple more towers. You know, this will really be able to stick out in the back. This way, when you see the camera road towards the bridge, you'll see the bridge and then your eyes will be drawn towards this castle in the background. This way you have a focal point and you're not distracted by all the detail or um, anything else that could be going on in the scene. You want a focal point where your viewer's eyes are drawn to. If your viewer's eyes aren't drawn to one thing in specific, then your environment or your animation can lack uh, composition and it can sometimes confuse you. You want to make it very clear what, what the focal point of your scene is. Otherwise, yeah, things can be distracting that you didn't want to be distracting. So everything kind of leads in to this uh, central point of the bridge and this castle in the background. So again, I'm just blocking out all these houses, the shape, some of them are gonna be longer, some are tall, but it, it's really not detailed because at the end of this, uh, as you'll see in the second tutorial, is I really just block everything out here in this first tutorial. After this, I have already pre-made some houses and some buildings and towers and other props that I'll just drag into the scene based on where my block out is. It's really cool because you get to see your entire scene get remade basically and really come to life within a matter of an hour or two just by dragging in these completed buildings. Now you don't have to do this. Um, for me, I had been building a previous environment and I ran into a problem with copyrights um, it was too similar to the picture that I was doing. And um, so I ended up taking the buildings from that, changing them a little bit, retexturing them, and I incorporated them into this scene along with some other assets that I had created. An older environment called Mountain City. It's, uh, you guys can find it on my Patreon. I have the blend file available. But I used some of the buildings from there. I refined them a little bit and I created what you'll see at the end of this video or you know in the beginning of the video where you know i create a pretty decent looking animation a clay animation just from taking those assets in so once i finished blocking out the road and all the houses there i started blocking out the castle and it's nothing complicated because I don't plan on the camera coming all the way back here. This is just a background your eyes will be drawn to, but the camera's not gonna, you know, swing by this area. It's not gonna get close to it. So it doesn't need to be detailed and it doesn't have to make sense totally. But you'll see here, I'll come back to the bridge, which like I said before is a focal point. And I'm gonna make sure that the castle and the bridge align well with each other. 
because if they don't, then I have a problem with what my focal point is. So this is, this is a very fun process where you can make mistakes, you can do all sorts of different things, but you're gonna wanna make sure your size, your, you know, everything's proportionate. You know, is, is one house standing out too much? And just so you know, depending on how far you guys have your background, you're gonna wanna scale building up or down to make them seem further back in the, the distance. So specifically with my style, I really focus on a focal point and I make sure that the focal point has the most detail. So like my foreground in this scene is going to have a lot of detail and in the background, it's not going to be nearly as detailed. You're going to have a drop off of detail. So when I make 3D scenes, I take it from the standpoint of what you do when you're drawing. When you draw a picture, right? Deceiving depth. And that's what I try to do in 3D. Even though 3D already does depth the right way, I try to recreate it in a different way with flat colors, flat textures. This way it looks more like anime because that's, that's what has driven me to learn 3D in general. So you see me just rebuilding everything, uh, resizing, and then I finally draw on a camera. Once you get your camera, make sure your perspective, your field of view, all that is the way you want it to be. Sometimes with this style, you can end up using some pretty weird field of views because anime can be quite distorted. So sometimes your field of view or um, it, it can be really drawn in or really drawn out to distort the image. But in this case, I end up going with a 20, 20 or 24 millimeter um, camera and I just start placing that where my focal point's gonna be and I plan out how this castle's gonna look in the background. You know, I want the castle to look right, so I end up bringing it up a little bit and moving it around this way that it looks right in our background. It's not too big, not too small. Uh, it doesn't have any problems where it clashes with any of the other elements of our foreground. We want it to be separate. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm taking the time to make sure that the background and the foreground um, are separated, that they look like, you, you can clearly tell that this is the background. And it's not. I'm also spending the time to make sure that the foreground looks right. I have the amount of buildings that I want, the road, the elevation, all sorts of different things that are really important in this stage. And the reason why I keep saying that this is so important is because when you go to drag in buildings like these, so those are some of the finished buildings I have from another scene. When you go to bring those in, you want to know exactly where they're gonna go. It makes the problem a lot faster because all you're doing is bringing in the finished, um, finished props and buildings and stuff like that. So it makes life so much easier for when you get into the, the texturing and the detailing and the just everything else, you know, that goes in with props and things like that. You have your uh, focal point of your scene done. You have your visual elements that your eyes will be drawn to. And you have your shape, so you know where buildings are going to go. In some cases, depending on how big my environment is, I will number the buildings because I use duplicates. So I might use the same building, you know, one time or I might use it two or three. So I'll number out the buildings sometimes, occasionally, depending on how. So like if I have the number one, two or three times, I'm going to have a specific building that's going to go in that place for that specific number. This is just something I do to stay organized when I'm working sometimes, but it really depends on how large the scene is going to be. In this case, it's not too big of a scene, so I'm not really worried about that at this point. But I'm really just worrying about getting the everything blocked out correctly. So we're finishing up here, everything's blocked out. And I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one.